Nier Automata is a game where you jump around and fight with giant swords, and there's killer robots, and flying mech suits, and pure insanity. But it's also this. More than any specific plot point, I think of this. I mean, just look at it. The art design in this game is phenomenal. The world is enrapturing. The character designs are iconic. I even find the menus strangely compelling. Everything here is a joy to look at. And it's not because of the game's graphical fidelity. It's because of its strong visual identity. Not to trudge up the whole our game's art argument that's been beaten to death by this point, but I have to imagine when Ray Bradbury said, video games are a waste of time for men with nothing else to do, even a science fiction visionary like him didn't dream of a game like Nier Automata. I find myself drawn to it in the same way I'm drawn to Blade Runner, which I think to this day is some of the greatest sci-fi aesthetics ever put on film. And like Blade Runner, Nier Automata is defined by its existential themes. It's a game that wants you to think, and the art design is reflective of that. I feel like the most obvious place to start when examining the game's aesthetics is with its standout protagonist, 2B. A character you've probably seen even if you haven't played the game, her design is just that ubiquitous. But actually, that might be exactly why we shouldn't start with her. Maybe the best place to start is the user interface. Okay, I know this might sound boring, but I'll get to 2B, I promise. There's some important stuff here. If there's a single word to describe the game's UI, I think there's nothing better than minimalist. It's not that it doesn't have a lot of information to convey, it's just that it does it in a very simplistic way. Color-wise, it's a mix of beige, grays, and off-whites. And in terms of shape, most of the menu is composed of rectangles. Hisayoshi Kojima, the UI designer, revealed his key concept for it. A design that was systematic and sterile, but also beautiful. At that time, I felt strongly that the best way to convey this would be to avoid ornate decoration and focus on giving it a clean, graceful, and flat design. He did add detail to it to prevent it from being boring, but as a whole, we got exactly what he wanted in his concept. I feel like Automata's UI is a microcosm for the game's aesthetic as a whole. You can see many of the same design tenants present in areas like the bunker and the copied city, which are completely colorless, blocky, and sterile. There's an emphasis on negative space to draw the player's eyes to what's important, whether that's options in the menu or the subject of the scene. Kojima didn't just design the UI, he also designed the machine lifeforms that you fight throughout the game. Stick to simple, symbolic characteristics that even a kid could draw, make their silhouette easy to understand. Those were some of the design goals established early on. No parts on the machine lifeforms were allowed to curve along three axes. This would keep the design simple and give them a retro look. Some of the early sketches would depict them with both eyes and mouths, but Kojima eventually abandoned that idea. As he said, I eventually decided that a simple, subtractive design would make their personalities stand out the most. I chipped away at my designs, removing details until only the bare necessities were left. Less was able to convey more. Okay, we could talk about 2B now. In a blog post, Hito Matsudaira, the character modeler of 2B, said that I would be happy if 2B becomes a character loved by everyone. And if the internet is anything to go by, he certainly succeeded. But just what is it about the design that resonated with so many people? Okay, besides that, Matsudaira went on to describe his inspiration for the design, saying, There's a fragile beauty to it, a doll-like form that feels like it could easily break. That doll-like quality is something you can really see reflected in the final design. One might imagine a combat android like 2B to be decked out in tactical gear and pouches. But instead, 2B and the other androids have a very elegant, clear, readable design. There's really only two colors on display. The black clothes directly contrast the white hair and nearly white skin. The simplistic clothes help give off that doll look, but it's the face and its features that really takes it away. What's worth pointing out though is the mole on her chin. 
even this flawless porcelain doll has a quote-unquote flaw. It's not a huge surprise that 2B and 9S's eyes are obscured with blindfolds for most of the game. Not only is it an overt, visual metaphor for being blind to the world, but like the machine lifeforms, we get that simple, subtractive design. Details are kept to a minimum. Now we can talk about the world. I really love this world. Shohei Kamayoka, the environmental lighting artist of the game, said they designed environments in Nier Automata with an eye towards emphasizing silhouettes through the use of open space. It's something you can really tell when traversing these landscapes. There is so much open space. Nier Automata is set almost 10,000 years in the future. The war with aliens alone was almost 7,000 years before the game starts. So why are there still buildings? These things should have all crumbled by now. Well, they did. The buildings we see in-game have been rebuilt by the androids, and then destroyed by the machines again, and then rebuilt, and then destroyed, rebuilt, and so on. These buildings are copies of copies of copies. It's not hard to draw some thematic connections there. So many of the buildings are identical, and they have nothing in them. They're just gray, empty, repeated structures residing in the vast open spaces around them. Near Automata, given its fictional history, could have gone in a thousand crazy directions with its world. But it didn't. It doesn't really look that much different from real abandoned areas. Like the rest of the game's art, the main setting is defined by its restraint and simplicity. But at the end of the day, what does the minimalism present throughout the game's art design actually achieve? As a creator, I don't want to impose something on the player, nor tell them that there is only one answer. Answers, themes, discoveries, objectives. I would be happy if the player could find all of these themselves. That's a quote from Yoko Taro, the game's director and writer. There's a reason I prefer overcast days. Time seems to go slower. I feel like I think more about myself and the world around me. And yeah, it can be a little lonely. Near Automata is an overcast day. The muted, monochromatic color palette certainly plays a part. And so do the simple designs and emphasis on open space. Near Automata is a game that wants you to think, to think about how alive its characters are, or its enemies, or its world to fully absorb and question these spaces, to ruminate on the themes. There's no defined aesthetic to existentialism. It's something you have to foster in the player. The minimalism in Nier Automata creates the perfect space for that quiet reflection you need when you're dealing with lofty themes. It doesn't overwhelm players with a barrage of information or complex designs to take in. Instead, it invites us to navigate its world at our own pace, allowing us the time and space to ponder the existential questions that it poses. If the machine lifeforms had easily identifiable faces, they'd be easy to identify as alive. We wouldn't have to question it. On the other hand, 2B and the androids look very human, but if they didn't have that simple doll-like inhumanness, we wouldn't question their existence either. The simple subtractive design present in these characters and the world makes us think about them more. In Nier Automata, minimalism isn't a void. It's a canvas to paint our own interpretations, thoughts, and emotions, just like Yoko Taro set out to accomplish when making the game. I'd say he succeeded. If you want to see more content like this in the future, subscribe to the channel and support us on Patreon. As a growing channel, a few dollars a month would make a tremendous difference. Thank you for watching.